If there's one thing I can say about Garage, it would be be ready to die by enemy players. People get really creative on how they hold choke points. You've built all the equipment you needed and you feel like you're ready to leave the swamp. The road to the gate is treacherous, but once you get there you should be relatively safe. When you get into Cordon, everything on the south of the train tracks is relatively safe. Feel free to sprint all the way to Garage from the gate. On the other hand, everything up at the north of the train tracks is enemy territory. Be really vigilant when you're gathering there. You finally made it to Garage, and you're wondering where do we sell all the scrap items. Let me show you where that is. A lot of people missed the staircase at the back. During my first playthrough of the game, I thought I had to go all the way to Swamp to sell my stuff. And for a good two days, that's what I've been doing. I've been running all the way to Swamp and back. But fence is right there, so you don't have to waste your time like I did. Now that I'm in garage, it's time to figure out what I need to build next. First things first is armor. We can pretty much upgrade it immediately as we come into garage as long as we found materials along the way. Also, since we have the 4M armor, we only need half the materials to upgrade. We can easily gather Stinky Root on the south side of the train tracks. Keep in mind that dogs in Cordon are no longer easily stabbable. So start using your secondary weapon to deal with them. It's pretty much like in the swamp. You get one type of material from killing creatures and another type of material from killing enemy NPCs. And this rule is persistent across all the maps. There's not a lot of seeds on the south side of the train tracks, but on the north side when you clear bandit camps, you can get some decent amount of seeds. Keep in mind that since you're using science armor, you don't really have a lot of bullet protection. So you have to get really creative on the way you approach fights. Here's an example. You have to kind of slow down, take time to take your peeks. Because NPCs can one shot, headshot you sometimes, and it's pretty sad when that happens. Essentially, I tried not to expose myself to more than one enemy at a time. Also, rotations are important. Just keep in mind that the NPCs know exactly where you are at all times. One more thing you should keep in mind, all this noise you're creating attracts enemy players. So if you're engaging in a fight, make sure you wrap it up as fast as possible and move to a different location.
As you can see, I don't have any healing items, but because of my rotation, I am able to heal passively. Looting more often than not will give you what you need, so don't be shy to check what's in them. It'll save your life. NPCs will always announce themselves before they fire at you. Make sure you listen for it. There is way too much shooting for my liking so I decided to rotate. Make sure you have cover before you loot or stuff like this will happen to you. Since this bandit camp was pretty large, I was able to get a lot of seeds and a lot of experience from this. Now that we finally gathered all the seeds and stinky root, we can upgrade our armor to the next level. Upgrading to the Zara armor will let us equip armor plates, which will let us be a little less squishy when it comes to PvP fighting. Another thing we can build now that we have material is a sight. You can press the question mark to see which weapons it's compatible with. Once you find the sight that is compatible with your gun, make sure you build it. Another quality of life item you can upgrade is night vision. You can find it in the device category and it's pretty cheap to make. At this point, in order to progress in the game, you need to find aluminum. But to gather aluminum, you need a metal detector. You can find it in the devices category. The metal detector has a battery. To charge it, next to the mechanic you'll find a generator. And you can charge it there. The only places you can gather aluminum is in Dark Valley and Agraprom. Once you reach Dark Valley, I would recommend you go all the way to the back of the map and start walking your way back to garage from there. You will find less people at the top, which means more loot for you. Aluminum doesn't just spawn anywhere in Dark Valley. These are the places where you can find them. I'll leave a link to this map in the description below. You can keep the metal detector in your bag until you hear beeping. Once you hear beeping, equip the metal detector and listen to the speed of the beeping. The faster it beeps, the closer you are. As soon as you dig out the stash, nobody else can steal your loot. Don't forget, even if you have enough aluminum, your base level is really important. If you don't level it up, you ain't gonna be able to upgrade. Since I'm level 2 and I'm trying to get to level 3, I will upgrade my weapon to make leveling up to 3 easier. Another thing to remember is to do the main quest, because the main quest will later offer you armors and weapons that will help you gather and progress in the game faster. A tip for when you're gathering in the open and you run out of ammo, you can always ask your fellow stalkers for some help. Most of the time they will offer the hand. You hold the tab button to communicate with them. Once you got your base to level 3, it's time to upgrade your armor with the aluminum you found. This armor will let you go into highly radiated zones in the valley. Just like in the swamp, we only want to bring the base to level 4 since the next upgrade is at the bar. Another thing I want to mention, teamwork in this game is really, really important. Being in a duo alone can help out a lot with the progression of this game. Not only with survivability, but how fast you can get from node to node in order to get the resources necessary to upgrade your gear. 
Here's an example of why having a teammate can help out with gathering. Keep in mind that Stalker and Bandits can see that you're downed. Players will rush to a heart symbol if they see one. Also, you don't have to kill enemy downed players. You can just loot them. You can also revive them, but I didn't trust this one to not kill us afterwards. So I left him there. Now after all that gathering and dying you've done, you finally got it to level 4. And it's time to do the final upgrade before we go to the bar. Also, you would want your quest to be cut up. Since the armor and metal detector you receive is going to be a detriment to your survival. This is how your equipment should look like by the end of it. I forgot to mention about the sports bag. If you haven't upgraded your bag yet, you should. The safest way to go to the bar is through the dark valley and then through the forest. The fastest way to get to the bar is through the dump, but you will encounter a lot of players that are going to be hungry to kill you for your loot. Before I leave you guys, I have two quick tips for you. There's a point during the storm where you can leave without it giving you too much damage. You can also go see the mailman to send people's bags back. Make sure you leave a nice little message because people can reply and you can make friendships. Like I said earlier, having an ally can always help out immensely. Thanks everybody for watching. Leave a comment below what you thought of the video. If I missed anything, if you have any other suggestions, Next video, we're going to be focusing on the bar. See you guys later.